To the graduating class of 2016, President Allen, the Board of Trustees, and the supportive family and friends that are here today, thank you for inviting me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be amongst the strong graduates and alumni of Meredith College. Congratulations, class of 2016, you did it. A few years ago, you made a great decision to continue your education and come to Meredith. Now it's time for you to make another great decision, which is to determine your next steps in society. Some of you will continue on with school, and others will go into the workforce. Whatever it is that you do, make sure you remember the values that Meredith instilled in you. One of those values is personal development. It's great to have mentors. Mentors are only there, though, to provide advice and guide you in the direction in which you desire to go. You are responsible for your own destiny. Therefore, you must establish your own plan that will help you reach your goals in life. I didn't get to where I am today by just going to school and getting my degrees. I had to work hard in the workforce conducting innovative research. I had to get trained on emerging tools. I had to learn to work as part of a team, and I had to keep my knowledge and skills up to date with past, current, and future issues in my field of science. And even in my current position, I don't know all that there is to know. As an agency, NASA doesn't know all there is to know. That's why we keep conducting research and exploring the unknown. I think a lot of people have the perception that we're in this era where we're at the peak of knowing about the world around us and how it works. However, I would argue that we know so little and we're on the verge of knowing so much because the more we learn, the more questions we have and the more we seek knowledge. Just in the last few years, we have discovered over 5,000 candidate planets around other stars, 5,000. When I was in school, we had nine planets. You guys have 5,000. New worlds to understand and targets to look for signs of life. The world you have in front of you provides a wealth of opportunity. Figure out where you fit in and go for it. I've often been approached by students who have a great deal of interest in engineer or science, but they have a frustration, usually with math, um, that prevents them from going for those degrees. My response to them is, you don't have to be great at what you do, but you have to be good at it. And if it's your dream, stick with it. And if you find an area that you're not good at, it, good at, work on it. Find the help that you need to succeed. And then don't stop honing your skills, because the more you know, the more you grow, and the stronger you become. You have the ability, ability to be what you want to be, just as the many notable politicians, journalists, actresses, and others who have matriculated from Meredith and walked this same campus have. Now it's your turn. Another one of Meredith's values is responsible global citizenship. This is important because some of the things that we do locally have long-term and global effects. One of the most concerning global challenges we face today is climate change. Each year, we see changes in temperature, sea level, and seasons. Currently, Greenland's ice sheets are drastically melting, and the Arctic ice wintertime extent hit another record low for the second year in a row. As a responsible global citizen, these facts and vital signs should concern you and ignite a desire for more answers, because climate change is all of our issue and we must do our part in creating a sustainable future for the generations to come. Currently, NASA is working with other U.S. agencies and organizations and our international partners worldwide to find answers to some of the toughest questions surrounding this topic, how the Earth is changing and how our planet could change in the future, and how humanity can cope and overcome these changes. In addition, we are using NASA data to help make countries around the world more resilient to the effects of climate change, including severe weather and droughts already happening today. 
NASA is currently conducting eight major campaigns in which researchers are traveling around the world for a range of scientific investigations related to climate change. We need your generation to be the responsible global citizens and help bring awareness locally and globally. The last value that I want to highlight is relevance. The world needs you, so make sure your next steps are relevant to current and future challenges that we're faced with. You could be the person to answer some of the most difficult questions, like cures for diseases, solving cybersecurity issues, or helping NASA on its journey to Mars. As the chief scientist of NASA, one of my greatest pleasures of my job is to see the cutting-edge research being conducted in many institutions and laboratories across the world and on the International Space Station. The research is usually astonishing, but the individuals behind the research are even more astonishing. These scientists and engineers are unraveling one of the most fundamental questions. Does life exist beyond Earth? Our next stop to answer this is Mars. Why Mars? Mars is a rich destination for scientific discovery and robotic and human exploration as we expand our presence into the solar system. Its formation and evolution are comparable to Earth, helping us learn more about our own planet's future and history. So we need more strong individuals like yourselves to help NASA get humans to Mars by the 2030s. Research has shown that diversity is the key to innovation and success, which is why NASA is leveraging its current partnerships and embracing new ones. We need all hands on deck, including women and other underrepresented groups for this far-reaching mission. Speaking of all hands on deck, it reminds me of a woman named Katherine Johnson. She was born in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia in 1918. She was known as the girl who loved to count. She was fascinated by numbers. By the time she was 10 years old, she was a freshman in high school, an amazing feat at a time when schools for African Americans usually stopped in the eighth grade if you were lucky enough to go to school at all. Catherine graduated from high school when she was 14, and after years as a, a teacher and a stay-at-home mom, she went to work for NASA's predecessor, the NACA, to work on wind tunnel tests at Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, just up the road from here. It was considered a rather tedious job, but not for Catherine and the other women who were hired at the time. So Catherine put her math skills to work as a counter, or in those days, they called these women computers. As a human computer, Catherine calculated the trajectory for the first American in space, Alan Shepard. Even after NASA began using electronic computers, John Glenn asked that she personally recheck the calculations made by the new computers before his flight aboard Friendship 7. That's how valuable she was. She is one of the unsung women African-American heroes of our country who didn't just carry on, she helped to carry the nation's space program, despite what she had to deal with living at that time in this place. She went to meetings where she wasn't invited and not totally welcome because she knew she belonged and that her skills were relevant and needed. So it's not just about diversity, it's about inclusion. We have to bring everybody into the room and we have to make them feel welcome. Last November 24th, Catherine received the nation's highest civilian award, the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. Catherine's story inspires me every day, and I hope it inspires you. If somebody ever makes you feel like you don't have a seat at the table, remember Catherine and carry on. Despite years of gender bias, many women have made significant contributions in their fields. It is the untold story in this country of women in science and engineering, among other fields. Women like Ada Lovelace, who was a gifted mathematician who introduced the first computer program. Lisa Meitner, a physicist who worked on radioactivity. Rosalind Franklin, a chemist and x-ray crystallographer who made contributions to understanding the molecular structure of DNA. 
Barbara McClintock, who produced the first genetic map for maize, linking regions of the chromosome to physical traits, and Susan B. Anthony, who empowered women and fought for equality. Susan traveled over 30 years fighting for women's rights, including vo voting rights. In partnership with Elizabeth Stanton, she started the women's rights movement. In her fight, she wanted to prove a point that women could not be denied their voting rights as citizens. So she voted and was convicted and fined for illegally voting. At her, la at her last women's convention in 1906, she addressed the att attendees and said, failure is impossible. Her work had led to the women's right to vote. We have to remember the stories of the women, the people who came before us, whose struggles and whose work upon which we build every day. These stories teach us that in spite of adversity and challenges, we must remain strong. Although things always don't go as we plan, don't stop setting goals and believing in yourself. If NASA stopped exploring and conducting research after every failed attempt, the agency would not be as effective as it is. The work we do at NASA is very risky, just as some of life's decisions are. However, when it's something you want to try or do, take the risk. When I was four years old, that unmanned rocket launch that I went to see, the rocket actually blew up shortly after it launched. As I grew up, I went to see many rocket launches. Some of them failed, but most succeeded, carrying spacecraft to study the sun, the planets, and the universe. From that first day, I realized that we may not always succeed the first time, but we can always try again. At NASA, failure is part of success. You learn from it, and you move on to explore. For you, take on challenges. Don't be afraid to fail. Just think about all the sacrifices that you've made to get to this point, and even more importantly, the sacrifices that your families around you have made for you to get to this point. You may have failed some assignments, lost probably a lot of sleep, missed some meals, or even lost some relationships in order to get here today. But you are here. Your families have supported you both emotionally and financially. And for the parents, I can say I've had two children graduate from college in the last five years. They're both employed, they've both moved out of the house, so it really does happen. <laughs> Together, you have all been strong. But today, relax, have fun, and celebrate. But uh, please don't forget to say a big thank you to your families, your friends, Oh, and also to those professors behind you who watched you, worked with you, and walked with you every step of the way. So I encourage you, when you're faced with obstacles or roadblocks, remember the values you've been taught. Remember Katherine Johnson's inspiring story. Remember the hard work that so many have done so that you can have an equal chance at life. You're not going to have all the answers. You may not even have everybody's support but you have what it takes to be relevant and make a significant change in this world. Go out and continue to do great things. Your family is depending on you, Meredith is depending on you, and the world is depending on you. Congratulations again, class of 2016. Go strong.